the week of June 19th to June 23rd. It was, well, it was an interesting one. Um, so if we take a look at the chart here, this is the seven day chart, uh, thank, courtesy of uh, investing.com. Um, the 19th starts around here. Uh, the 21st was our our drop day, our uh, news day. So that's, that's this drop here. Uh, that was the day that we basically cracked permanently through 43. Um, we've since climbed back up. And uh, we've been kind of climbing slowly out of that hole uh, ever since. So our trading really started on Tuesday. Um, Monday, we kind of sat silent um, and in anticipation of what might come ahead of Wednesday's news. And ultimately, uh, ahead of news, we dropped to uh, kind of, it was our first attempt to test 43 down here. And we got in at, uh, I think it was 43.34 uh, or 43.20. Uh, and, and then waited for the climb up. Um, well, actually, more so, I suppose you could say, hoped for a climb up. Uh, we got to as high as cracking 44 again uh, momentarily but it really didn't sustain. And this was a momentary spike literally minutes before Wednesday's news here. So this, uh, this drop basically happened as a result of news. And if, if you guys remember, the news actually was marginally positive. So the first reaction was actually, you know, consistent with the news where we went up. Uh, I, of course, got out of the long position in about here. Um, I think it was 43.71 or 72 or something like that. Uh, that's where I got out here. So I missed this nice spike here, um, but you would have had to wait until literally seconds before uh, the news came out uh, in order to benefit from that, or actually wait until after the news came out in order to benefit from that. So as tempting as this was, it wasn't as, as dramatic as um, I would have liked to see in order to actually take a short position. Um, keep in mind that you know I am a bull, so you know if you've been sh if you've been a bear this whole week, you've definitely done. You, you probably could not have lost money. Let's put it that way. So bears uh, had an easy time this week. Um, for the bulls, however, we had to struggle a little bit. Um, you had to be more strategic, but I mean. I was able to squeeze out some nice profits, as you can see from down here. Um, to, uh, basically, two two successful sales um, totaling about $1,100. Uh, so nothing to sneeze at at all. I'm perfectly happy with that, and take that any week. Um, but basically, what happened was there was just a lot, still a lot of pent up sales pressure, uh, and. The long-term chart, when you look at that, so if we take a look at the three-month, uh, zoom out here, guys. So if you take a look at the, the long-term chart here, if we go back to November of last year, you can see where we touched 42. And that's kind of what everybody was expecting to see. We wanted to see these lows of 42. Um, and that's what we're playing with right now. So I think it was just, the expectation of having to see these numbers uh, that really ruled the week. And the fundamentals, I think, are now kind of behind us. They're being ignored to some extent. Let's flip back to the seven day chart here. Uh, it's, I'm still a bull and I probably won't change my position. I actually, I'm pretty sure I won't change my position. Even if we drop to 40, even if we drop to 38, I'm just that much more of a bull. Uh, these numbers just don't make sense. And at some point, you know, whether it's this coming week or, you know, the next month, we're going to get some sort of catalyst news release, whether it's going to be OPEC or, you know, some pipeline troubles or any, some sort of distribution channel uh, falling apart. Uh, in the Middle East, what have you. Basically, one piece of news like that comes out and this thing will just rock it. Um, it'll happen most likely in conjunction with a, 
uh, inventory data release on uh, Wednesday, whether that's next week or the week after. Um, but something like that in combination with um, even marginally good news and it's only up from there. So I'm staying bull and uh, you know if you take a look at my portfolio over on tradingjournal.ca you guys will see uh, that you know I'm, I am suffering losses right now so let me refresh these uh, these values uh, you know so I have three bull uh, bull buys um, starting from f as high as 52 so you know this is not <laughs> pleasant at the moment uh, and I'm not necessarily even calling for a high this year of I don't I don't know if we're gonna get back to high of 52 uh, but I'm not in any hurry to sell this because at least this uh, this 52 position which is now 65 days old uh, because I think we're going to see you know high 40s if not low 50s so if we get to 50 yeah I'll probably consider taking the loss on the 52 position um, but I'm certainly not um, in any hurry to sell at 43 uh, it's patience is is a key here. Uh, so if you don't have the ability to uh, to hang around for you know a few months in order to get your profits um, or minimize your losses, then this is not the game for you. Uh, I've learned that lesson the hard way. I'm sure some of you have as well. So getting back to where we were. So following the drop, basically um, you didn't have to wait too long uh, in order to take advantage of the drop. So we went as low as 42.08 following the news on Wednesday, and but we ran into a lot of resistance at 42.20, 42.30. Um, and I got in at 42.20. Uh, you know, it was low enough and I didn't expect us to have enough momentum to crack 42 that, you know, it, it basically it was good enough. Uh, and it turned out to be a, a great buy. Uh, I held it overnight. So if we go back to the results on my tradingjournal.ca account, you'll see that the buys and the sells are on separate days. So on the 20th, we, sold, we bought on the 20th, sold on the 21st, we bought on the 21st, we sold on the 22nd. So the 21st was our news day. So we bought here at 42.20 and uh, we had the opportunity to sell, uh, where was it? So we went up to 42.72 here within the same day. So, you know, theoretically that was actually a pretty good buy and I actually put in an order to sell right there, uh, but we drifted down before I could execute and I wasn't entirely convinced anyway, so it was probably for the best and it turned out to be. Um, so holding overnight, we managed to climb up again and you can see here that ultimately we cracked through 43, but we struggled a lot for um, a while here, uh, a couple of hours to, to get to kind of whether there was a lot of doubt whether or not we were going to make it through the 43 level or not. Uh, so I just took a safe profit um, at 42.92, I believe it was, and um, you know, a profit is a profit, and I'm not going to question it. Um, I have no regrets. We went as high as uh, 43.31. Um, that day and ever since we've been trying to get back to those levels but the highest we saw yesterday as of Friday was 43.20 um, so there's tremendous amount of resistance going up but you can see that uh, although we weren't able to uh, stick with it we did drop um, as low as 42.55 uh, early Friday morning unfortunately we just ran right back up. I say unfortunately being a bull because I was expecting lower lows. Um, I was expecting at least 42.50 to 42.30, in which case I would have bought long again in anticipation of a climb up um, early next week. Uh, given what's happened on Friday, so if I flip to the one day chart here, given uh, what's happened on Friday, basically we've just had we, we had this momentary drop to 42.55, but then otherwise we basically just climbed, climbed, climbed. We had some hiccups, but basically it was a very bullish day. Um, and that took me by surprise, uh, gotta say. I, I expected lower lows, didn't expect the, uh, the bulls to be you know, in control of the day. That being said, 
they were in control, but they didn't manage to get as high as I thought they would get. Um, everybody was expecting this week that we would see, you know, if we made it through the 43 level, that we would see 43.50, and we got nowhere close. 43.31 once, and we couldn't even get back to that level again. So that amount of resistance suggests to me that early next week we're going to revisit the lows of 42. So if I flip back to the uh, seven day chart here, um, I think this is the top of our curve here. And now it's a question of whether or not we're going, when we, when, when we do go back to 42, whether or not we're going to bounce off of it or whether we're gonna crack through. Um, if we do crack through prior to Wednesday, I don't think we're going very low. I think we might go to the high 41s, um, but you know I would be a buyer anywhere in that range, 42, 42, 30, 40, you know 41, 90. Basically, any of that looks attractive to me, um, because of course I'm a bull, uh, and you know whether it's this coming Wednesday or the Wednesday after that, um, there's going to be something that basically convinces people that it's time to turn the other direction. So if we take a look at the one month chart here, let's take a look at the three month chart here. So you can see the pattern here. Um, you know, early in uh, March, April, we had this bullish run uh, and middle April, we, we turned the corner and basically we had this pretty consistent fall um, all the way through early May. And then we again, we turned the corner, uh, we bounced off 42, but that was in uh, Asian or European trading. North American markets never saw these lows. The lowest we saw was mid 45s. Um, and then we basically just climbed back up. Um, we hit high of literally 52 on the nose. And then just, we've been dropping for five weeks now, which is the longest consistently negative red drop um, since 2016. So the anticipation of a turnaround is, I think, on everybody's mind now. Um, it's not to say that we're not going to 40, we're, who knows, 50-50 at any time. Um, but, you know, if I'm seeing this, everyone else is seeing this, and purely based on technicals, we're sh we should get a nice jump to, I would say, at minimum 46, 48, um, but I expect that we're going to um, test at least 49 and 50. Um, like I said, I have a position all the way up at 52, and I honestly don't expect to be able to take that out at break even. Um, at least not, probably not this year. Um, but that's okay. Um, at you know, at these levels, 49, 50, my loss there is minimal considering the profits I've already taken this month and this year. So I'm perfectly happy <coughs> taking that loss if need be. But that's kind of what I expect to see. So I am a bull and that's why I'm not buying bear positions. So I get questions if I flip back to, actually let's stay on this chart. So the question is, you know, if I expect, for example, where we are right now, just over 43, 43, 13, if I expect that we're going to um, revisit 42s, then why, aren't, why don't I short? Well, the, the answer is it's 50-50. Even though I, that's my gut feeling, I perfectly understand that I may be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I don't want to be holding a short at 43 if my expectation is that we're going to 50. Uh, you know, that's how I got into my 52 position where, you know, we were climbing this whole time. And I thought, well, you know, if I get in at 52, we'll see at least 53. Well, that's not good enough. So that $1 potential there um, is what got me into that 42 mess. And right now I'm in that very same situation where we're at 43, I expect maybe 42. That $1 um, short profit potential is not enough to entice me to hold that position if I'm wrong. So I would rather wait for the 42 if my call is right go long there and then profit from the other from the upswing that, that would follow ultimately. So that's where I am that's where I'm at right now. So if we go up to uh, and it depends on how we get there, but if we go up to you know as high or I should say as low as 44, 
preferably 45. I probably will start taking short hedge positions, um, not only to protect my profits on my longs in case we reverse, but even if I'm wrong in that situation and we do keep climbing, I feel confident that we'll see those numbers again um, at some point, probably within a few weeks of the buy. Uh, so that's kind of my strategic approach to this whole thing. Uh, it's, it's basically a lot of patience. Um, you know, I buy with a belief that I can profit from it that same day or the next day, but I'm perfectly aware of the fact that I may be wrong, and if I am wrong, I buy the I buy positions that I'm willing to hold long term. Um, some people will disagree with me. A lot of people use uh, stop orders in order to exit positions if they're proven wrong. I've found that that's an easy way of taking unnecessary losses most of the time. Sometimes definitely pays off, but more than half the time I end up taking a loss on a stop order where I shouldn't have because basically it, it touches your stop, reverses trend, and then you know you're kicking yourself that you're you don't have the position in order to actually sell at a profit or at, at least at break even. So that's kind of my approach. And if you look at my tradingjournal.ca account um, on my uh, performance page, uh, you'll see kind of how things have developed this month, last month, and uh, since I've been using this approach going back to uh, February last year, uh, it's been remarkably consistent. Uh, some of you guys, I'm sure, are doing even better than this, but. You know, the fact that I've been able to perform this way, this consistently, is what's uh, kind of driven me to, to share my ideas and, and get some feedback from you guys on, on how, you know, you guys trade and alternative approaches, alternative ideas. But uh, yeah, give, a, give me a shout on uh, tradingjournal.ca or on these YouTube videos. I'd love to hear from you guys on what you're thinking and why you're thinking it. Uh, and. Uh, see how our strategies compare and kind of what wins and what scenarios you know on any given day anybody can be lucky um i don't you know consider that as evidence of anything really but uh, if you can uh, show a pattern of successful results over a year uh, then that really does say something so i'm uh, you know i'm pretty happy with the way my approach has been performing um, and considering that I've had been able to perform this way in both bullish and bearish markets, it's what really gives me the confidence of being able to reproduce this no matter what happens with crude. Um, I've suffered big, big, um, unrealized losses, uh, at least big in my books, <laughs> and uh, patience has really gotten me out of the hole. Um, and. The simplicity of the approach is what I think is going to appeal to a lot of people who don't necessarily have the same sort of business and finance background that I do, because it really is a lot of common sense and more psychology than it is finance. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling at this point. But uh, coming back to next week, if I flip to the seven day chart, uh, I'm a bull, but I'm a bull who acknowledges the fact that we're probably gonna go down before we go up. So if you're a bear or if you have more guts than I do, take a short position, um, profit from that drop. Um, I think we're going to head towards 42, if not to it or below it. So there is a, a profit there to be taken. I just, I'm not prepared to risk holding that position if I'm wrong. So that's, that's my feeling. Um, ultimately, I think we're going up, which is why I'm much more willing to take a long after the drop. Um, than I am to try to profit from that drop. If you feel otherwise and you have a good reason, please let me know and uh, I'd love to, uh, to discuss. In the meantime, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to stay tuned, use the comments down below on YouTube or over on tradingjournal.ca to get more info on my trades, performance, etc. And see you guys next week. Cheers.